Hi there, this is Eric for Ochoy. In this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with Octane for Maya, assuming you haven't actually used it before. Uh, hopefully you've already downloaded and installed Octane Standalone and the Octane uh, for Maya plugin. Make sure, of course, that you go into the Windows Settings Preferences Plugin Manager and find the Octane plugin from the list. So here it is. Make sure it's loaded. You can also turn on Auto Load if you want it to load each time you start Maya. So as long as it's loaded, you should be good to go. You'll see that there's an Octane menu up here now, and this gives you quick access to things such as the Octane materials, Octane cameras, environment, converters, and other various tools and utilities. There's also an Octane shelf that has buttons that allow you to do many of the same things that the menu does. Most importantly, you'll want to go to Windows, Rendering Editors, Render Settings, open up the Render Settings, and make sure that Render Using is set to Octane. The Common tab is where, of course, you'll set things like your rendering camera, your settings for rendering out batch renders of animations, and of course also image size and other obviously common tools. The three tabs that appear in the render settings that are related to Octane are Octane Render, CUDA Devices, and Octane Live. Octane Live is a very simple page that allows you to check your activation status and any issues you might be having with your license. The CUDA Devices tab allows you to activate the uh, graphics cards that you have in your machine. If you don't see anything here and you know you have CUDA enabled cards installed on your machine, double check and make sure that you've uh, downloaded and installed the latest drivers for your graphics cards. You can choose to turn on all GPUs at full powers or turn them on selectively and choose the priority. So this machine obviously has two GeForce GTX 1080 Ti's. So I'm just going to turn them on individually here. If you want to customize the priority of your graphics cards, you will want to turn on Use Priority and then adjust this menu to set it to either low, medium, or high. And these are useful if you're running other applications at the same time that might be drawing memory from your graphics cards. Uh, so if you set this to high and you have a lot of other stuff going on in the background uh, that's using a graphic card, you might run into some stability issues. So you can kind of fine tune these as needed. I'm going to set this to just the default settings for the moment. The most important settings are found under Octane Render. And we'll talk about these in depth over the next few videos. There's two ways to go about actually viewing your Octane Render while you're working in Maya. You can simply go to the Renderer menu and choose Octane Render. And you'll see that this is going to come in default showing the wireframe of your scene. You can also go to Windows, Rendering Editors, Render View. And if I choose Render, I'll choose a snapshot of the perspective scene. We'll see our scene right here. If I hit the IPR button, you'll notice that we see the render here in IPR, and then in our perspective view goes back to the default shaded view. And this is because you can only have one instance of Octane rendering in Maya at a time. So it's either going to be through the IPR or through the uh, camera view. So you see when I close IPR, it instantly goes back to the Octane Render here in the perspective view. So next, let's see if we can get rid of this wireframe and see more of a shaded view. So in the Render Settings window, I'm going to go to the Kernel menu here and choose Create New. And my scene is going to go completely black because now there is no light in the scene to light up the objects. So to create some light, uh, there's a few ways I could do that, but the easiest way to go about it is to go down to the Environment menu and choose Create New. By default, this is going to create a white texture, which is going to light the scene evenly with just plain pure white. Uh, one thing to pay attention to when you're working in Octane for Maya is that sometimes this uh, Gamma menu will be turned on. So this is basically Maya's Gamma settings and this can conflict with Octane's gamma settings. So generally when I'm working in Octane for Maya, I'll turn this off so that I can see the colors correctly in, uh, in my Octane render. So that's off now, and I have a pure white color, 
if I click on this little arrow button right here, this will open up the environment settings in the attribute editor. I can go in here and adjust this value, which goes from white to black. So if I just wanted kind of a dark gray to light the scene, I could just move this down. Or I can click on this texture uh, checker box right here. This will open up the Create Render Node window. And under Octane Textures, I can create a, uh, say, an RGB Spectrum Texture. So if I click on this, it'll go black again. But if I click on the color swatch, I can choose a color, say, like a blue or something like that for a kind of weird looking underwater scene. Uh, not exactly breathtaking, but you can see how you can change the color to just get a flat color to light the scene if that's something that you're going for. back to the uh, environment. Uh, you can also switch from the texture environment to the daylight environment and this allows you to use either the sun direction or a time of day to determine where the lighting is coming from. So the sun direction is a very basic type of sunlight system and we'll go into it more detail later on but you could go down here to sun direction and say type in values here to adjust where the sunlight is coming from in X, Y, and Z. Or you can choose the daylight system, which is, looks a little bit more realistic and allows you to adjust, say, the hour, or the time of day to change the position of the light. You can even choose a specific longitude and latitude on the Earth and a month and a day as well. Where texture environment is most useful, if I go back up here and instead of daylight environment, I choose texture environment is uh, you can throw in like an HDRI image or something like that. We'll talk about that more in a later chapter. So that gives you the basics of at least getting some light in your scene that you can so you can see the objects. Let's set this back to let's see just a light color like that. We'll go back to environment. Now, when working with uh, Octane for Maya, you can, of course, use the Hypershade. So let's open up the Hypershade by going to Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. And within the Hypershade, you'll find that there's an Octane section that allows you to create Octane-specific materials, Octane nodes, textures, transforms, and so on. When working with Octane for Maya, you'll be using these nodes not the standard Maya nodes and not the Arnold nodes. You just want to use the Octane nodes. So only Octane materials will work, only Octane textures will work, at least out of the box, um, as well as the transform projection, emission, a medium, and so on. So you won't be using Maya's place 2D textures or place 3D texture nodes or the uh, procedural nodes. You'll be using Octane nodes instead. And uh, we'll go into more detail about these nodes in future chapters. So this should get you up and out running with Octane for Maya quickly, and in future videos we'll start exploring some of the amazing features that you'll find with Octane.